Hey VC, how you doing? It's Gary. I'm back again without my Googles this time, but they're right here. Um, I got a short one today. Ha 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 ha, you say. He always says that. But I do. I've only got four albums, one of them I've already shown. Um, a little frustrated. I, I, I mentioned on my last video, um, I wanted to do a Keith Jarrett, um, my top five favorite albums of his, and a Don Cherry, and I can't find the vinyls that I wanted to show, which I know I have them. Um, and I don't want to do the video without it because, uh, well, at least the Don Cherry one certainly. But I got some obscure stuff, um, so it's kind of it's kind of frustrating to have ideas and I can't I can't do them. But um, scouring through the boxes of things that I do have, uh, I I kind of created a, like a miniature theme. I only have four albums today. One of them I've already shown, um, but they are uh, mainstream bebop electric guitarists. Uh, that are very, very good, but uh, particular albums of theirs that I love that haven't come out on CD. Uh, so I'm avoiding anything that did come out on CD. Um, so the first one I'm going to show, I'm just going to, I know I've talked about this very recently, uh, but Jimmy, Jimmy Rainey's Momentum, a trio date, uh, recorded in one day in the studio, uh, July 21st, 1974, on the PA USA label, who's not around anymore, which may be why this hasn't come out. Uh, Richard Davis on bass, Alan Dawson on drums. I love that cover. Um, fine bebop session, you know, mainstream, pretty much. Um, stretching out, no overdubs, just a, a live jazz guitar trio. Um, fan fantastic playing. And uh, I know I showed this, I love this, and you know, Jimmy Rainey albums from the 50s are available. Jimmy Rainey albums recorded long after this are available, but this isn't, that's, that's kind of sad. Um, Moving on, because I already showed that one, here's a guy, pretty well known. If you're into mainstream uh, jazz guitar, uh, it's the first album I ever bought by Herb Ellis. Um, Herb Ellis was uh, certainly of an older generation. Uh, this particular album was recorded in uh, 1979, in, uh, in, in, I believe the whole thing was one day, it's just a July 79, but um, it's a Montreux Jazz Festival thing. Apparently, Herb Ellis was um, the featured guest. Uh, his set was all of 32 minutes, um, which means this is a very brief album. And yet, he had two different lineups that he played with. He played in a trio um, with Ray Brown on bass and Jeff Hamilton on drums. Jeff Hamilton got around. Uh, this is on Concord Jazz, by the way. Um, and was Jeff Hamilton was all over the Concord Jazz releases during this time as a younger guy, younger drummer and uh, played in a quartet with Jake Hanna on drums, Michael Moore on bass, and Ross Tompkins on piano. So Herb Ellis was um, kind of like the, the featured, one of the featured guys here, and he had uh, two different bands that he played like 16 minutes each with. The sad thing about this being out of print, it's a fantastic album, very well recorded, is that with it being 32 minutes, there's absolutely no reason why Concord Jazz couldn't... Um, release this on CD with another full album without having to remove tracks for time considerations or anything. They got plenty of time to, to stick another album on there. If they thought for some reason that this wouldn't sell enough to justify bringing it into the digital age, then stick another Herb Ellis album on there or a Great Guitars album or something, um, that, which is how I learned about um, Herb Ellis, if, if, in case you guys haven't heard of, of the Great Guitars, uh, was a guitar trio that was started by uh, Herb Ellis with uh, Barney Kessel also on electric guitar and uh, Charlie Bird on uh, nylon string guitar and they had a bassist and drummer and they toured for many years and that lineup stayed intact <coughs> for most of the time. Um, they had a slight change I, be I believe um, after Barney Kessel had a stroke. Now all three of those men, gentlemen, are, are passed away now. But um, at the same time I, I had seen the great guitars on TV on PBS about I want to say 78 or 79, which is my introduction to all those guys. And instead of going out and buying a great guitars album with the three of the men, I went out and I bought three individual solo albums. I bought a Barney Kessel album, which I, I have, but it, it's available on um, CDs, which is why I didn't show it. Uh, I bought At the same time I bought this, and I bought a Charlie Bird live album, also recorded at the same time, 79, I believe, uh, called Sugarloaf Sweet. Fantastic, beautiful album. Uh, Charlie Bird just on nylon string guitars with a bass player and drummer. 
Uh, Charlie Bird is very big on the Brazilian jazz scene and loved Joe Bean. And in some cases, he, he recorded uh, so many Joe Bean classics over the years that some of those, t to me, are definitive versions right up there with Joe Bean's originals. Um, and there's at least two or three Joe Bean tracks on that single disc on that Sugarloaf Suite. It's a beautiful album. I listened to that for many, many years. And um, that's one of the ones that I went running looking for on CD. And that was on Concord Jazz as well. So it's a little strange that they would release that. Um, which was recorded right around the same time as this Herb Ellis album and not do the Herb Ellis album. I, I, I don't understand the thinking behind it. Um, fantastic album. Like I said, they could re-release re it. It's 32 minutes, so stick something else on there if you think it's not going to sell. You know, the, the Great Guitars albums, I think a lot of them are out of print, um, and Herb Ellis was a part of that. Um, I'm not sure... Uh, yeah, Herb Ellis did other albums for Concord, um, so I don't know why this this particular one's too damn good not to be available. Um, my third one today, and this is really, no matter how, unless you were in the record stores when this came out, or you live in San Francisco, you probably never heard of this guy, and I didn't either. This is one I just picked up, um, you know, back, back when record shops ruled. Uh, I would just go through jazz from A to Z. Um, looking for interesting things, and uh, miscellaneous D I found this under. Um, Eddie Duran Ginza, San Francisco uh, guitarist. Uh, this is a, a guitar bass drums trio. Uh, Dean Riley on bass and Benny Barth on guitar, on drums. Benny Barth on drums. Eddie Duran on guitar, electric guitar. He does Duke Ellington tracks, uh, Daydream, Benny Goodman track, Breakfast Feud, Billy Strayhorn, The Flowers of Love Some Thing. Uh, Artie Shaw tune, uh, Moon Ray, uh, Vince Guaraldi, Ginza, the, the title track, um, you know, Vince Guaraldi, most people should know, uh, and he does a couple originals, there's one, I think there's two originals on here um, that he wrote himself, and it's interesting, that the liner notes, which were written uh, in 79, this was recorded in March of 79, uh, Eddie Duran was 53 at the time, and hadn't recorded a lot, and I don't know that he did a lot of recordings after this, but it mentioned that one of the reasons that he probably isn't better known and didn't record is he was very, very hesitant to tour. He didn't like the whole uh, traveling musician lifestyle thing, especially in the jazz world, where they pretty much make most of their money from touring and club dating. And, and face it, you know, even in the U.S., even at this time, even in the late 70s, a lot of the musicians had to go overseas and do tours in Japan and places like that just to earn a decent living. Um, you know, they, they couldn't even stick to the U.S. To, to make enough to get by in a lot of cases. So, uh, Eddie apparently had a family and was not too fond of, of traveling and stayed and played in the local San Francisco uh, jazz clubs, which were probably few and quite small. And it mentioned here on the, on the liner notes, again, written when he was 53 in 1979, that um, his primary way of earning a living was he was a barber. He cut hair. And he apparently kept that job for many years. He was still doing it when he recorded this album. Uh, apparently his father had owned, uh, started the barbershop, and, um, and he just went there and just picked up and you know learned from his dad and became a barber and um, stuck with it for the sake of being able to go home in the evening and not have to travel all over and seedy places. And you know you can't really blame him. It's it's not a great lifestyle. Yeah, I think of people like. Um, the great saxophone player Warren Marsh, who um, basically d died on stage. He play, was playing in a, in a club when I think he had heart failure in, in a little club, he just literally playing uh, till his last breath. You know, it's not a, it's not a great lifestyle, guys, um, in a lot of cases, you know, for creative artists or jazz artists or any and all, you know. So I don't know if Eddie's still around. It'd um, be great to find out if he was. Little picture there of the band Benny Barth drums, Eddie Duran in the middle on guitar, Dean Riley bass by the bridge. Beautiful, nice shot, nice shot. Um, the last one, this guy's not a bebop guitarist, it's kind of a bebop album. What's John Abercrombie doing here? And it's not on ECM. Uh, I remember seeing this in the record shop, I had not heard of this. You know, again, this is one that I saw. Uh, in the record store when I was trolling around, going through, and I'm like, what the hell is this? Uh, this was recorded 
I'm assuming that everybody watching this is familiar with Abercrombie, and I shouldn't be. But John Abercrombie's been recording since he started as a leader for ECM Records. And uh, he's appeared as a sideman on other people's albums and as a part of a group that was you know, thrown together for a session, uh, but never as a leader that I'm aware of for any other label besides ECM, with the exception of this one record. And what this was, and this was recorded, you know, well into his ECM years. Uh, recorded March 19th and 20th, 1979. So this is when uh, he has his first working band, his first quartet with uh, Richie Byrock on a piano. And what this is, is this is his quartet without Richie Byrock, basically. Uh, it's the, the bassist, George Moraz, very well known, and Peter Donald, who was the drummer in 79 of that Abercrombie Quartet. They recorded um, three albums for ECM. And this is a little, a little side thing that I guess uh, ECM Records allowed him to do because it's kind of a mainstream album. It is not the John Abercrombie that you know really uh, so much. If somebody just put this on and I didn't know it was John Abercrombie, at best there might be a couple phrases. Now I've been listening to Abercrombie f since 78, so, uh, and I've got so many albums of his as a leader and, and a sideman both. Uh, and yet, if I played this, there might be a couple phrases that sound like the kind of phrasing that he would use during improvisation, which you would expect. I still wouldn't pick out that it was him. Um, and he even plays his, at the time he was playing a lot of the electric mandolin that he had. He plays electric mandolin on one track only. Um, but even that's not a dead giveaway. Um, he plays, uh, there's, there's not originals here. There's no originals on this album, which again is probably why he was able to do this off of ECM uh, when he was signed to that label. Uh, so it was recorded March 19th and 20th, 1979. I know I said that. George Moraz on bass, Peter Donald drums. He plays, only does the six songs on here. Uh, Miles Davis, Nardis, uh, Beautiful Love by Victor Young, There Is No Greater Love by uh, Isham Jones and Marty Symes, uh, John Coltrane's Bessie's Blues, uh, Victor Young's My Foolish Heart, and uh, Dave Brubeck's In Your Own Sweet Way. Very, you know, fairly well known Dave Brubeck tune, original. Um, and that's all, that's all he does. Just all these these bebop um, kind of classics in a very straight on um, live guitar, bass, and drum session. Only thing I know that he he, he did as a leader uh, that wasn't on ECM. He did a du duet album called uh, Drum Strum. Uh, that was uh, he was paired. It was just him and a drummer. And I should have looked for it. I forgot the drummer's name now. And it's a great album. Uh, that was kind of like a co-leader, and he was part of uh, a band, uh, you know, here and there that would record an album that wasn't done on ECM. But this is, like I said, I think the only thing he's ever done that I'm aware of as a leader that wasn't on ECM. Very, very interesting album. Uh, never came out on CD, which is why it's in with, with the others. And uh, I copied this into my computer a long time ago so I could still listen to it. Very, very interesting album. And I recommend it if you can find it. Um, okay, guys, this will be my shortest ever video, and um, I'm just I'm I'm having trouble locating some vinyl. You know, some things. Uh, there's definitely things that I only have on CD that I will want to do thematically in in the near fu future. But I kind of wanted to start with the vinyl stuff, and. Um, you know, which will help me maybe get it uh, filed away in some kind of reasonable way instead of all over the place the way it is now. But um, I'm getting a little stuck. So hopefully there was something in there that was interesting or valuable to you. Or um, if you even see um, any of those albums up on YouTube, as a matter of fact, the Jimmy Rainey album, the Momentum album, the entire thing is up on YouTube. Um, in one shot. You don't have to go look for the individual song. And I highly recommend listening to it. Um, it sounds better than my vinyl does, and I've listened to it several times since I did the other video uh, that had that album on there. Um, and, and it was really good hearing it again. So I haven't done searches for the others. Um, I don't know about that Abercrombie one, if that would be up there or not. Um, hopefully Herbella says, who knows. But, um, you know, if you ever come across them, 
and get an opportunity to listen to him. If you like kind of straight ahead, very, very small group uh, electric jazz guitars, that very clean sound that I love so much, um, I highly recommend those albums. Okay, guys, I'm going to be back real soon because, um, frankly, I'm bored to death. So um, you'll be putting up with me again uh, all too soon. So hope everybody's having a great day, and thank you for all the kind words and everything, and uh, be talking to you soon.